Hello MacWarriors, how is it going? Welcome to your daily dose of MacWarrior Online. Today it is Solaris time! Yeah, we have the arena mode in MacWarrior Online now and I love it so much. It is so fun to play and um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do some Solaris videos now on the channel guys. Um, I'm gonna seat them in every now and then. I don't know yet if we're gonna do a, a dedicated day or maybe even two each week for Solaris. But um, yeah, today we're gonna take a look at Solaris and how it plays and uh, I want to give you some builds and, and build ideas for it. Uh, what is Solaris? If you haven't heard of it yet, uh, Solaris is an arena mode where you play one versus one or two versus two. This is the, the, the most intense mech fight ever because it comes down to your personal pilot skill against the enemy personal pilot skill and of course the build and you play mech against mech and it all comes down to you make you need to make every shot count and and go for weak spots and and have a plan and uh, be able to twist and yeah that's cool also um a new a new set of builds emerges from here because um again you only play against one or maybe two enemies that means you don't need to uh, sustain in terms of ammo for killing 12 people you can go really low on that and instead bump up your sustain in terms of heat management that is so crucial you need to be able to be constantly in the fight and um, again heat management is a big big thing here therefore um, drop ammo get more heat sinks to the mech or um, maximize armor get more mobility this is what it's all about um, don't use lrms <laughs> ever because uh, again you don't have any any teammates maybe if you're playing 2v2 but uh, it's not good you are getting pushed and expect it and be prepared for that that is so important anyway today we want to take a look at division 3 so all of the mechs are being categorized in different divisions which is interesting because each division has uh, its own meta game now if we go for um Division 3, for example, which my cataphract is in right now, and we go for all mechs, you can see those are the mechs that PGI considers uh, being equally strong. And um, that makes it interesting, because we have this pool of mechs competing against each other, so you don't, you don't fight all of the mechs, or you don't have to prepare for all of different kinds of outcome, which um, defines um, a meta game in each division and um, I, I think I like that because then you can figure out uh, counter strategies against some strategies that were um, yeah they were pushed to the meta game and that's that's cool that's that's what I really like so uh, we have seven divisions and we play the Iliamo Romits today which is the cataphract hero and as you can see we are running shotguns shotguns are because those weapons run really cold and uh, as I said before you really want to have the sustain to keep up the damage constantly and on top of it we have some nice critical damage potential from the lb tens of course so as soon as you open up a component you can go for crits and you will see that in the games that actually ammo explosion is a thing here that's uh that that, that is sometimes it's your last resort you know you, you're super super um, desperate that you cannot bring the enemy down try to go for a component that is open and hope that there's ammo in there and try to crit it and it works anyway triple lb10 um, doesn't require me to take any additional heat sinks because the weapon is very cold and um, yeah it has a very nice cooldown of 2.25 seconds reduced by about 0.5 seconds from the quirks and the skills here so that gun fires really fast and we have three of it we also run a light engine which uh, makes it so that we can lose this side torso preferably uh, we want to keep the the right side for the double lb10 shotgun action so if you shield shield with that side and um, yeah light engine on a, on a heavy mech and assault mech always uh, don't go for xl because again, you are so vulnerable, you are susceptible to getting shot, and a lot, because there is one enemy against you and he has no other target than killing you, so XL is super duper risky, don't, don't do that. The skill bit looks interesting as well, uh, look at that, we, we don't need heat management as I said before, so we are completely skipping heat, but we want cooldown, we want sustain, we want to be able to have DPS on this build here, and we are going for magazine capacity and LBX spread, however, I, I'm not entirely sure if we actually need magazine capacity, or if we actually need four tons of ammo maybe you could even drop a ton and then go for two small lasers maybe for additional damage bump um but yeah th that's it and then there's that so <laughs> survivability is most important here you will you will need to max out survivability in almost every mech if you want to go to the arena because uh again 
you will get shot and you have to rely on your hit points. And it, the more you have of them, the better it is. The good thing about the cataphract here, of course, is that it has some some in, in built in um, quirks, armor quirks, and this thing is strong. So center torso plus 22, right torso plus 15, right arm plus 11, legs plus 15, and so on. And speaking of legs, I was almost maxing out my legs because the leg meta game is a thing. So a lot of people are going specifically for the legs in this game mode, just because um, you can twist your upper torso and shield with your arms. You cannot reliably do that with the legs. So if you take a look at this here, if you take a look at this, um, like the legs are visible from every angle. And therefore, this is, it's an easy target on most of the mechs. And, you know, again, people go for it. Anyway, apart from it, I needed uh, my upper torso mobility. I'm going to the left side here. Torso speed and torso yaw is what I want to be able to reliably shield with my arms when the enemies are going for my upper torso. And on top of it, I was going for the point of anchor turn and speed tweak here. So I had some spare points. Uh, and as you can see, this is this is the most the most what I what I want here. Firepower, armor, and mobility. This is what it is all about in the arena mode. And the rest is completely skipped. I don't need additional heat management. I don't need radar deprivation so much in a heavy mech that wants to be super close. That's not needed. And I don't need consumables. Actually, I need consumables. I would have gladly taken consumables, but consumables are prohibited in uh, Solaris. You cannot take them. They, if, Even if you equip uh, consumables, you cannot use them. And um, therefore, you can save your points and put it into something else. But anyway, that was a lot of talk now. Let's get into the arena and uh, let's crush some enemies here. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, uh, if you do, then don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the, uh, to the channel if you haven't already. And now it's finally time to hit the battlefield. All right, first game of the day. We are playing the Liao jungle. We have the cataphract and we are going up Hello, against a Highlander. Okay, that's gonna, that's gonna be tough. That guy has a lot of armor. This is to sue me. Okay, all right. Uh, people from the people from the street joining in here. So yeah, I, I want to engage. What? I want to engage at close range mostly. I need to, to sneak up on him and maybe go for the legging. Maybe, maybe that's going. what I have to go for because Highlanders have a lot of arm and he wants. Yeah, he wants to stay at range. Holy crap! How am I gonna engage this match him? Is not going to be easy to call at the start. Okay, we, we need to sneak up on him somehow. To sue me? Don't kill me, please. Come on, let's let's use this here. Let's just lose the block and, and and try to get close. I think I'm gonna go for the legs here. I have to do the stupid mech, uh, leg meta, which is uh, which is uh, a thing because you know destroying the legs is mostly easier than destroying a whole upper torso. But we're gonna see about that. Maybe we can land some nice shots there. Um, I assume he is storing ammo in the legs. So, oh what? What? Nice juke there, man. Nice juke. And I, I really need to get closer here. And um, yeah, his mobility is really good. I have to give him that. Okay, we're gonna go for the legs here. Um, I think this is the only chance I still have, and I need to shield with my left side, since my... Oh yeah, this is working. Since my um, auto cannon in the torso is on the right side. Okay, we pinned, we pinned to Sumi down. Ooh, nice, time. nice shielding there. Nice shielding with the legs. And uh, the mech is hot, so we can go for the upper torso now. Um, yeah, it's cooking. Okay, cannot shoot anymore. We'll, we'll die soon. From overheat. <laughs> all right, all right. GG. GG. Cool, that was an intense fight. He could have gotten me easily. Um, but yeah, the, the lagging then and, and afterwards uh, um, the, the overheat. It was super unfortunate. That was the first round. That was cool. Let's go over to the next one and see how this will go down. All right, second game of the day. We are playing against a Bushwhacker. It seems that he has ultra auto cannons there. I uh, couldn't really see that. And either Hello, ultra fans. auto cannons this or racks, official. but I assume Bring it's gonna be ultras. So jungle. yeah, we're gonna go in and um, honestly, the, the, the bad thing is that Bushwhackers are really good at um, shielding with the upper torso. So um, I'm gonna, um, I gotta assess his torso twisting abilities, and if he's not twisting at all, I'm gonna go ahead and try to shoot up a torso. If he is twisting a lot, then I'm gonna go for the legs again. There he was. Alright. Just saw a blip a second ago. And uh, I gave away my position because I wanted to pre-fire here. Uh, maybe he didn't see it. Okay, we still have a chance on getting the first jump on him. Yes, we did it. Good. Now he knows that we are here. Okay. Oh, there's rocks. Oh, oh, I think rocks are actually not that good here. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna just shield that and wait for him to jam and be hot. 
And uh, yeah, that's exactly what's happening right now. Um, I think, again, rucks are not the best weapons here. Um, they, they produce a lot of cockpit shake, but at the same time, they are unreliable, they are toasty. Um, I believe we have it in the back already. Sorry, man, but I think this is not the best. Okay, we him. And, oh, ammo explosion. Nice. Leg destroyed. Cool. Um, yeah, that, that worked out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chuck. Um, but again, don't don't bring racks. I believe it's not really good. Unless you really hardcore boat them Ooh, and to grind through your enemy really fast. Anyway, that was the second round. Let's try and uh, see how the third round goes down. All right, third game of the day. This is gonna be interesting. We're playing against War Gnome from the 42s. He is playing a King Crab, and it seems Hello, that he everybody. has a lot of Welcome auto cannons. So yeah, that might I'm be the sixth fish. auto cannon King Crab the there. Uh, I'm a little bit scared because he Cafe. won nine out of nine matches that he played. Um, you can see the stats earlier. And uh, yeah, how do we go about it? Crippling him? Destroying arms? Um, or just going for the legs directly. We, I mean, we have to kill him quick up, because King Crabs awesome. have armor and sustain. And this well, is exactly right what this Solaris thing is all about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I'm gonna go for the arm there. Let's see. Let's this see if we can. If we can. Oh, damn it. That was a bad shot. Alright. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna pull up here. Gonna splash the damage. The thing is, I have to, I have to face tank him a lot. I cannot, I cannot possibly bring him down. Nope, nope, nope. He is running AC-10s and four AC-2s. That is so much firepower. I like this build here. I have to say, I like it. So, with my, with my poor uh, LB-10 brawler, I cannot close the distance here, which I need to do. And uh, as you can see, my, my status is already down. So his King Crab just has more firepower and more armor. And he's completely relying on overwhelming me before I can get anywhere close. Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, my only chance is getting an ammo explosion here. The only chance that I have. Let's go for the legs. Uh, I'm not gonna make it, probably. Uh, maybe can, I can juke him. Going the other way around. He probably has seismic, though. I expect it from him. Okay. Never mind. GG, dude. GG. Cool. Um, I'll give you I give you the game anyway, because I want you to see the, the losses as well, to, to see how the game play. dynamics is going, okay? So, again, this King Crab, massive firepower, um, massive armor, and uh, he just he just got me at mid range. I couldn't get into into close range and keep my keep my damage up because he had so much pinpoint. Cool. That was the third third round. Let's go over to the next and see how this will go down. Man, that still hurts. And we Hello, are going everybody. up against the commando. This oh, this Coming is interesting. That's gonna that's gonna be super tough because the Ilium Romance doesn't have the best the mobility. So we're gonna see if the commander is able to get behind us. So we, we probably have to hug a wall or something like that. Uh, this is this is this is scary, honestly. I am scared of the commando, but we will see about that. So the, the good thing backs. about the Solaris Finally is that you can that you can war. do so many so many different new builds here and uh, figure out new plans. So you don't need firepower to or sustain to kill 12 people. So you go low on ammo, go high on heat sinks, and you just go high on firepower and high on armor. So, yeah, there he is. Oh, I missed that. Damn it. <laughs> Should have hit it. Um, I'm not gonna, not gonna drop on him. Because I don't know... Yeah, I don't know where he's coming from. There he is. I hit that. That's okay. So the arm mobility comes in really handy. And uh, what I should do more often now is the following. Give me, give me one second. Where is he gonna engage from? Where is he? Oh, what? There he is. Uh, yeah. Uh, what I should do more often. Give me a second. Wow. Wow. Is this didn't work? Okay. Uh, I wanted to to do um this uh, attack attack uh, command. Because that makes it so that uh, we can keep keep track of the of the commando, even if I even if I lose line of sight. It's just the uh, the good old. Wow, the lag is strong with this one. Didn't get his arm yet. Now I got it. Okay. Again, this is this is it. I'm, I'm trying so hard, and I finally lagged it. Okay. <laughs> you rip commando. I got you. That was a great Ooh, fight here, dude. Um, you could, you could, sadly, he couldn't Wait, get through my armor. Sadly for him. 
But yeah, now what I mean is, I uh, use the command wheel to um, to tag the enemy, to say enemy spotted or attack this target, Ooh, just to, to um, keep track of there. him. Even if you lose well, line of sight and even if you lose lock, like the, you can see him on the minimap for a brief amount of time, and this is what I wanted to try here. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Well, it was, again, intense fight. Have a GG, dude. And we're gonna go over to the next one and see how this will go down. All right, our next enemy Hello, is another this King Crab. Crab. Okay, this guy has a, has a stats of, uh, I believe, uh, 12 too. So he won 12 games and uh, he lost two in the King Crab. And uh, I am actually, again, a little bit scared. I think the King Crabs are pretty strong in this meta game here or in this division. Or they could be very strong. Just uh, put in, again, big, big firepower and overwhelm the enemy before they can overwhelm you. This is probably what he's doing as well. I was seeing ultra auto cannons, I believe. Maybe it's the, um, the Shredder, the good old triple, no, uh, no, quad, uh, no, wait, it was more, it was more, it wasn't the Shredder, it wasn't quad ultra auto cannon 5, and this is the cool thing, everybody is trying new way. stuff here, and, and I like it so started. much, we have a whole new field to discover, guys, and we are gonna do it together, I could play this all day, oh, honestly, I'm not even kidding, okay, King Crab is here, is he gonna wave, no, he dropped down, okay, I wonder if he saw me or not, and I need to find him, though, uh, he's probably below, waiting for me. Let's see if he can get the drop on him. No King Crab here. Whoa, this is scary now. The King Crab vanished. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he wanted to get distance between me and him. And this is exactly what I need to need to break now. I need to get closer. He's coming up there. Okay, we got one shot out and then we die. Ooh, so many rocks. But again, rocks are, I believe, not the best weapon to use in this mode. I'm gonna straight, gonna go straight for center torso and try to splash. No, it's ultra twos. Never mind. Anyway, straight for center torso. Center torso mass. It will jam eventually, man. And I'm in. I'm. Ooh, what? Nice twist there. Nice twist. I'm gonna go for chain fire here just to to make him uncomfortable. Wow, the center torso critting. Uh, he is almost down. Like in center torso open. I twist in, man. Yeah, that's what I wanted. He's doing a smart job, uh, shielding a lot while the auto cannons are jammed. Ooh, this is a dead fight. <gasps> but he overheated. Or mo may maybe I got ammo crit in the center. I don't know. It was probably ammo crit in the center. Holy king crap. That was an intense fight. <laughs> All right, GG, dude. Uh, ammo. I got, I'm gonna ask him. Uh, maybe he's gonna. Maybe he's gonna respond. Was that was an ammo explosion? I, I want to know. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh. Yeah. Well played. Anyway. That was. That was fun. It was so intense. I want to do one more, guys. One more, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Okay, guys, I, I just I just got a supply cache because uh, I have my accolade ranked up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use the time that we have right now to show you the new supply cache system. So we have one unopened supply caches, and as you can see, there is a supply cache progress bar. Instead of a random player getting the supply cache after each game, um, you have this kind of progress bar, and I think this makes sense now because um, you have something to work towards. And uh, of course, uh, on PGI's side, it makes sense uh, since the supply caches are. Um, um, are free to open now, you don't need a key anymore, it makes sense to not just randomly give away one supply cache each game, because that would ruin their complete in-game economy. Um, instead, they, they have uh, implemented this progress bar, and, um, you know, it's an individu individual effort that gives you the supply caches now, and the good thing is that you don't need the keys anymore, as I just said before. I just got a Solaris level 2 supply cache, and um, they are different uh, rarities of supply caches that are granted. Um, this seems to be some kind of uh, rare Thing, since this is yellow and uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna open it now so this is it you just click open and you get some random stuff one of which is uh, ultra rare because again the, the the level of the supply cache determines uh, what's inside we have some uncommons here which are probably commons I believe I mean a case like, why would this be common rarity? This might be tagged wrong, but I don't know. Uh, also targeting computer mark 2, SRM2, Artemis. Yeah, that's just some some crap. But we got some ultra rares here. Boar tusks. And uh, I don't know if my Ilya Moromets can take that. I'm gonna... I'm gonna check that out. So this is one of the new bolt-on things, the, the new bolt-on cosmetics. And uh, we're gonna take a brief look into that before we go into the last game for today. Let's see. So we gotta go to Solaris again. We have our Ilya here. Really hope that he can take that. So we have the camel, 
and in the camo spec you can go for bolt ons now and sadly the Ilya is one of the mags that are not yet outfitted for taking the, the bolt ons so um, on other mags you could you could uh, put on the bolt tusks now that I just won let me quickly let me quickly check that out I know that you can do it on the Atlas or on the Kodiak for example so let's let's try this real quick that's the codec, and yeah, as you can see, we have a lot of stuff that we can apply here. For example, this nice headpiece here, we can go for shipwrecked shoulder pads, something like that. Port and right, mm. uh, or something like like this here. And, and the cool thing is, you can actually put stuff in the hands of the mech, like swords and, and axes and stuff. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is very interesting. I, I don't know why there is an excavator shovel up here, but uh, okay. Yeah, why, why not? And you can buy those for, for MC, as you can see, but also get them from the supply caches. So let me check out my board tusks. Wait, where are my board tusks? I'm pretty sure that I'm able to, to put on board tusks here. Huh. Look at that. Like, there are boar tusks available which look like that. But the boar tusks that I just got, that I just gotten, they are not here, obviously. Like, I, I filter that and it is, uh, hmm, interesting. Maybe PGI has to fix something. It feels like I just got something uh, without getting it. Anyway, again, that's the new supply cache system. I'm looking forward to it when it works properly. And yeah, we're gonna play one more round in our Ilya Muromets and then that's gonna be it for today, guys. Where's my Ilya at? Ilya, 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 there we go, cool. So, see you in the game. All right, we are going up against the Hellbringer. It seems that he has an Ultra AC-20 and some medium pulse lasers, maybe? We are gonna see. Now, the Hellbringer Hello, is interesting everybody. because um, the Hellbringer the can run a lot of heat sinks, a lot of them. The However, it has some relatively cafe. bad hitboxes and if he's not twisting properly, um, we pr are probably able to cripple him re real quick by just destroying one side torso and then we're gonna go down from there. I think I'm gonna go for the Manager, ballistic like side, but yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see. He's probably also running ECM. It's gonna be, oh, this is, oh yeah, low signal. Where is he? Where is he? He's on top, okay. He is on top, he has to be. Yep, there he is. And we're gonna go around here. Hey dude. So oh, oh, oh it's a sneaky move. This is gonna be good. Okay, we're gonna go for for the Yeah, for the side there. Can we? I wanna get rid of the auto cannon. Can we? My god. I'm not I'm not playing properly right now. <laughs> but auto cannon is down and we're gonna cripple him completely by destroying the side also, messing with his heat management and now now it's time for just yeah, he shut down. He shut down because of that. Um just because he was hot at the moment and I destroyed his side torso, his heat threshold went down below his yeah. current heat, and that made him shut down there. Unfortunate. That. I'm sorry for that, but sometimes it's how it goes. Um, yeah, it's always good if you have to jump on the on the enemy. If you get the first shot out, that gives you a big advantage. And uh, in a scenario like that, where you can actually get behind the enemy, even more so. Anyway, that was the Solaris first impression. And again, guys, I have to say I love it so much. This is a very new and refreshing game mode for me. And um, I'm looking forward to, to, to do a lot of different builds and see what works and what doesn't work. It's probably a little bit more optimized and less about fun, because you actually want to win the 1v1. And uh, yeah, that's it for today guys. If you liked the video, then don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also make sure that you click the little bell icon next to the subscription button to get the notifications when a new video comes online. If you want to support me, go down below to the description. There is the link to my Patreon page and I hope to see you on the battlefield. Goodbye.